This is a blue crab, Calinectes sapidus. That's Latin for savory, beautiful swimmer. This charismatic crustacean lives in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, sharing its home with 18 million humans and countless other species living in 64,000 square miles covering parts of six states. This watershed is the setting for the Bay Game, a multiplayer simulation exercise that helps participants to better understand the challenges and possible solutions to interconnected socio-environmental problems. In this case, declining water quality in the Chesapeake Bay. Bob Landel from the Darden School, Dave Smith from Environmental Sciences, and I have been working on it for the past several years. It grew out of earlier research on the UVA Bay game, and we are excited about its imminent launch on the Darden Business Publishing website. The Bay Game focuses on the impact of human activities in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Water quality has been a problem in this region for more than 40 years, threatening food production, climate regulation, biodiversity, and recreational opportunities. The Bay Game is based on real-world problems and real-world numbers, in the game, players adopt roles corresponding to key decision makers in three watershed regions, roughly the states of Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. We have watermen, who must decide how much effort to devote to crabbing and fishing, and farmers, challenged to raise beef or dairy cattle, and how, if at all, to mitigate the associated nutrient runoff. Developers buy and sell land in various combinations of location and development methods. Waterworks operators are tasked with water purification and wastewater treatment decisions. Now, I'm sure you get the picture. Each player has a variety of decisions to make, and when you layer in the regulator roles with the power to tax and incentivize various behaviors, you end up with a near infinite number of permutations. Now, a critical element of the Bay Game, and part of what makes it unique, is that players determine their own winning conditions based on their personal preferences for three components of well-being economic, environmental, and social. So for example, if you were Scrooge McDuck, I'd expect you'd place a pretty high value on economic achievement. But if you were John Muir, founder of the Sierra Club, you'd likely prioritize environmental well-being over the other components. It's a wicked problem with no single best solution. For you see, the Bay is a common pool resource. Its health reflects the impact of collective decisions and preferences. That's a key lesson of the Bay game. If we, as game players, and indeed as residents of the watershed, place a high priority on economic development and low priorities on environmental or social well-being, well, you get what you play for. There are several other important takeaways. For example, the notion of trade-offs, the need to understand the system, like cause and effect relationships, feedback loops, leverage points, etc. And finally, the value of thoughtful communication. Players who collaborate with one another across roles and regions achieve much better outcomes. Participatory simulation exercises, like the Bay Game, can provide the aha moments inspiring solutions to some of our most pressing social and environmental challenges. Thanks for listening.